Travis McMichael and his father Greg and their neighbor William Roddy Bryan face murder charges for chasing down and fatally shooting Arbery after seeing him running in their neighborhood. The three men face murder charges in the death of the 25-year-old Ahmad Arbery. Greg and Travis McMichael claim they were conducting a citizen's arrest and that they acted in self-defense. As we get closer to the start of the trial, we're learning new details about some of the evidence that both sides want to introduce to the jury. One piece of evidence the state might introduce is alleged racist statements made by two of the defendants just moments after Arbery was shot dead. Court TV legal correspondent Julia Janae has more on the story. He admits to firing his um, shotgun three times. He says that all three shots struck the victim. Court testimony reveals disturbing new details about what happened the day Ahmad Arbery was shot dead in a South Georgia neighborhood. Ahmad Arbery was chased, hunted down, and ultimately executed at the hands of these men. The three men, Travis McMichael, his father, Gregory McMichael, and their neighbor, William Roddy Bryan, all three faced charges in Arbery's death. Stop right there, it? Stop. The 911 call made by Gregory McMichael reveals what was said in those moments leading up to the shooting. In court, a state police investigator reveals that Travis McMichael used the N-word referring to the man he had just fatally shot. Mr. Bryan said that after the shooting took place, before police arrival, while Mr. Aubrey was on the ground, that he heard Travis Michael make the statement. Ahmaud Arbery's mother devastated by the testimony. To learn that after my son lie, laid there in the streets dead, that he didn't feel any type of remorse, very, very heartbreaking. During the seven hour preliminary hearing, the agent testified that Travis McMichael had used a racial slur on numerous occasions, according to phone records. On the Instagram post, somebody sends him, this is on January 2nd of 2020, someone sends him a video or a picture. We were not able to recover that from the phone. That's one of the reasons why I haven't searched one out for Instagram. They send that out. He says, makes the comment, that would only be better if they'd have blown that in words or had blown that in words head off. The agent testified that Travis, who previously served in the Coast Guard, also made racial comments about a boating job. He made a statement that he loved his job because he was out on a boat and there weren't any in words anywhere. Testimony revealed that Travis McMichael's co-defendant, William Roddy Bryan, also made racist inferences. And ironically, this all came to light after a question from Bryan's own attorney. Is there any evidence that race played a role in the actions of Roddy Bryan on June 23? There's evidence that uh, Roddy Bryan's racist attitude in his communications. Okay. And from that, I extrapolate the reason why he made assumptions he did that day of what was occurring. He saw a man running down the road with a truck following, and I believe he made certain assumptions that were at least in part based upon his racial bias. Kevin Goff, Brian's defense attorney, downplayed this revelation. Well, certainly it wasn't the answer I was expecting, but then again, I didn't see any evidence of it today. He says the GBI needs his client's testimony if they want to convict Travis and Greg McMichael. Ironically, the star witness for the prosecution is supposed to be Mr. Bryan. I don't know how they're going to do that. You know, they've taken the Mockingbird. You're familiar with the, with the book. It's a sin to kill a Mockingbird. Well, the one thing worse than killing a Mockingbird is trying to turn it into a canary. They had a mockingbird and they stepped on it and they trashed it. The attorney for Ahmaud Arbery's family says those racist comments made by the defendants will likely not play a big role in the upcoming trial. Racial epithet actually doesn't add much to the prosecution here, except for the fact that this wasn't an accident or self-defense, but this was hatred that was motivating this, his action. In the meantime, the mother of Ahmaud Arbery grieves the loss of her son and reflects on the last moments of his life. He was afraid. Life had put him in a position where I couldn't protect him. And unfortunately, he was not able to protect himself. 
something you're not going to want to miss. You can watch Julia Janae's full exclusive interview tonight here on Court TV. The Arbery Family Speaks. That is at 7 p.m., 6 p.m. Central right here on Court TV Live. Now we are going to be coming back and we will have more on this story as we continue to cover all the breaking news here on Court TV. This will include Goff, who made statements in this case. There's an interview, Kevin Goff interviewed tonight, the attorney for William Roddy Bryan, as you can see on your screen, 8, 7 Central on closing arguments with our own Vinnie Politan here on Court TV Live.